In chemistry, the concept of amount, or sometimes called chemical amount, to distinguish it from other sorts of amount, is an is extraordinarily important concept. It's got a very specific meaning, which is quite slippery to grasp. Now, this chemical amount shouldn't be confused with the way that we use amount in ordinary everyday use. We would say amount when we're meaning the mass of something. We use amount when we're talking about the volume of something, or even when we're talking about the number of things, we use amount. In chemistry, it's got a different meaning from each of those. Now, it might seem a bit odd, but the easiest way to describe the meaning of this concept of amount is through its unit of measurement, the mole. Uh, you know anything about the mole, Hozzy? Sure do, Prof. Uh, I learned about that last year. A mole is the number 6.02 by 10 to the power 23. Hmm? Well, Aussie, 6.02 by 10 to the 23 is a number, and you've got the right number, but one mole is not a number. One mole is technically different from that. Try to think about this. A mole is the amount of stuff in a sample, how much of the sample contains 6 by 10 to the 23 particles of some specified type, right? The amount that contains. So I define, <coughs> right from the start, I'll use the abbreviation for the term mole, which is M-O-L, not much of a, an abbrevia abbreviation, is the amount of substance that contains Six point oh two by ten to the twenty three specified sorts of particles. Okay, it's not a number, it's how much of stuff contains that number of specified particles. Extraordinarily important, uh, if not very obvious, difference. Uh, Prof, I think I got the idea about it's not a number, but the amount of stuff that contains that number of what? Spe spe specif specified particles. What does that mean? Specified particles. I don't know any specified particles. Well, we need to specify whether we're talking about atoms or ions or molecules and which particular ones, but don't worry too much because as far as we're concerned, it's essentially just the particles of which the substance we're talking about is composed. Huh? So, for example, if we're talking about iron, solid iron, what are the particles that make up solid iron? Aha, uh -huh, atoms. We're talking about iron atoms. Take another substance like uh, a gaseous substance, argon. Gas also consists of atoms. What sorts of atoms? Argon atoms. We take a molecular substance like water, composed of water molecules. So we're talking about the specified particles are water molecules. Uh, nitrogen gas, we're talking about N2 molecules, nitrogen molecules, diatomic nitrogen molecules. Now, there's another category of substance we need to talk about and that's ionic crystals, which, are, which we believe to be, or we model to be formed of cations and anions like sodium chloride the classical example, and there we specify either the sodium positive ions or, not both, or 
the chloride negatively charged things that we call anions. Uh -huh. So, um, one mole of iron is the amount it contains 6.02 by 10 to the 23 iron atoms. Mm -hmm. One mole of water is the amount of water that contains 6.02 by 10 to the 23 water molecules, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now we come to the really useful and important uh, part of this story. One mole of every substance, the amount of it that contains exactly that many particles of which it's composed, has a particular mass. One mole of this weighs a certain amount. The amount of this that contains that many particles weighs a certain amount. The amount of this that contains a certain particles weighs is a certain, has a certain mass. It's called, obviously, the molar mass. Now, it's pretty easy for us to calculate what the mass of one mole of each of these is from data that we already have. So, for example, in the case of things consisting of atoms, the mass of one mole of iron atoms, for example, is the atomic weight expressed in grams. And in the case of iron, that's 55.85 grams. There, for example, very closely is one mole, 55.85 grams of iron. That sample of iron, weighing very closely that much, contains very closely that many iron atoms. That's one mole. In the case of argon atoms, the atomic weight in grams is 39.95 grams. I can show you how much that is at ordinary standard and temperature. It's the amount that occupies this box and the contents of this box with 6.02 by 10 to 23 argon atoms in it weighs 39.95 grams. In the case of a molecular substance, like water, it's the sum of the atomic weights of the atoms in the molecules in grams. So in the case of water, it's two times 1.01 for hydrogen plus 16.0 for oxygen. That's 18.02 grams. Mm -hmm. In the case of nitrogen, it's twice the atomic weight of nitrogen, 14.01, and that's 28.02 grams. That's the mass of a sample of nitrogen gas that uh, contains 6.02 by 10 to the 23 nitrogen molecules. That's one mole. I didn't show you, in the case of water, 18.02 grams. Here's the amount of water with a little bit of carbon in it. That's the amount of water, which is one mole, which contains that many water molecules and has a mass of 18.02 grams. And if we go down to here, then we're talking about the, s the sum of the atomic weights of the atoms in the formula. And in this case, sodium 22.99 in ACL, 22.99, plus for chlorine 35.45, and that's a total of 58.44 grams. Okay, so um, we're going to use that, uh, and chemists use that an awful lot. Does that make sense, Ozzy? Wow, I think I see, Prof. So, 
55.85 grams of iron, let me clarify, and 39.95 grams of this gas argon, and 18.02 grams of water, and 28.02 uh, grams of nitrogen gas, and 58.44 grams of sodium chloride, all contain the, exactly the same number of particles of specified type. That's 6.02 by 10 to the 23. Is that right? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so then 0 0.01 of a mole of this, one hundredth of that mass, would contain the same number of particles as one hundredth of that mass, or one hundredth of that mass, which is one hundredth of a mole, or a hundredth of that mass, a hundredth of that mass. Yeah. What number of molecules, not number of particles would that be? Well, if it's one hundredth of a mole, it would be one hundredth of that mass. Can I use your pen, Prof? And that would be 6.02 by 10 to the 21 specified particles. Uh -huh. And so twice that mass would have twice as many particles as this mass. And so on in ratios. Is that right? That's it, Aussie. Spot on. It's not possible... We need to know when we're thinking about how much of this reacts with how much of that. From the chemical equation, we know what the relative numbers of particles are that react from the equation. But we can't count out particles. It would take us essentially infinity to count out the number of sodium ions in one mole of sodium chloride. That much ordinary common table salt contains 6.02 by 10 to the 23 sodium ions. So if we wanted the mole, we can't count out that many in any practical time at all. But what we can do is by weighing it out, weighing out a sample, if we know the mass of one mole, we know how many moles in a particular mass, and therefore we know the number of particles. So to express that, if we've got the mass of a sample from the molar mass, we can work out the amount. And if we know the amount, knowing how many particles are in one mole, we can work out this amount, of course, is in moles. We can work out the number of particles. Uh -huh. That's pretty powerful stuff. Okay, so that's it, I guess. What's wrong, Rosie? What's on your mind? Well, Prof, I was thinking about that demonstration you did last week of burning magnesium in oxygen. Sorry, you didn't actually do it, but there's a million uh, video clips on YouTube. Uh, fantastic when magnesium burns in oxygen and you get that white magnesium oxide left behind. Thinking about that, like I always do, um, can I clean the board? Good. There. Okay. Uh, I'm getting excited. Prof, can I stand up? Uh, the chemical equation for that reaction of magnesium burning in oxygen, I think, is this. Solid magnesium and oxygen gaseous react and they form magnesium oxide, which is that white solid. And to balance that, two of them, two of them. So, let me just clarify. This tells me that Every time the two particles of this, two atoms of magnesium react, it doesn't tell me that only two atoms of magnesium react, but for every two that do react, one molecule of this reacts. Uh -huh. Good, 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 good. So if, for example, 6.02 by 10 to the 23 atoms react, then we know that the number of molecules of oxygen that react is half of 6.02 by 10 to the 
by 10 to the 23. And of course, this is one mole and this is half a mole. Right. And so um, let's, let's take it a bit further. Suppose we know that we had a sample of magnesium whose mass was such that we had 0 0.016 moles of magnesium, then I would know immediately that the amount of oxygen that was consumed, we say, in that burning reaction would be 0 0.008 of a mole. All right. To calculate what the masses are. Yeah, the masses, the mass of magnesium would have to be 0 0.016 times its atomic weight, um, what's that prop? 24.31 would react with 0 0.008 times 32.00 grams and grams. Uh -huh. Will you tell me? 0 0.39 grams? Thanks prop and 0 0.26 grams of this. Wow. So from that equation, if I know the amount of either mass or number of moles of one of them that reacts, I can work out the mass or the number of moles of the other. Is that right? Sure, powerful, powerful. Exactly right, Ozzy. What you've just done here is the essence of that field of chemistry called stoichiometry. How much of this reacts with this to form how much of that? Your reasoning here, we could have applied to the amount of magnesium oxide product as well as to the relative amounts that react. Good. Great, Prof. So, I don't really need to know what the numbers of the reactants are. How many particles and how many particles? All I need to know is the relative number of moles. And that's the same as the relative number of particles. Good, Ozzy. That's exactly it. You've more or less summarised the whole point of why we use this idea of amount to determine reacting quantities, relative amounts that react and are formed. We don't need to know the number of particles, the absolute number of particles that react. We need to know the relative numbers and we can get that from the relative number of moles. And moles are linked to masses through the molar mass. Mm -hmm. Aha, got it, Prof Bob, got it. Thank you. <laughs>